Coach Sullivan here again with MGS Coaching Football. To my subscribers, I thank you. Non-subscribers, I'm hoping to tease you into pushing that button. This past fall, I completed my 38th year coaching football and as a defensive coordinator. But over that time, I've also been an offensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, longtime head coach, and all of this at both the collegiate and high school levels. In this presentation, I want to talk to you about one of our sniper games that we simply call Q Bronco. Okay. So Bronco is one of our RPO coverages. It's a different look for the quarterback. I'll, I'll go over that portion of it with you. Okay. And then we use this when we're expecting either a zone power read or RPO, but we execute it even if we don't get that. Okay, so this is usually a game plan for teams that it's a big part of their offense, not, you know, a once in a while thing. So the key terms are over here in order to help you understand uh, what Q Bronco is all about and how we're able to execute it. And then I'll diagram it over here. Okay, so the first key term itself is Q. Okay, Q. And Q is we're going to take aim at the quarterback read. Not the quarterback, but the quarterback's read, right? Zone read, power read, RPO, offense has had a wicked advantage 10-plus years ago, right? Put us on our heels. Well, our sniper game is designed for us to dictate to the offense, you know, turn the tables on, okay? So we're going to, you know, take aim at the quarterback's read for both zone and power read as well as RPO, okay? So letter A, it's going to involve the D-line, the inside linebacker, and the outside linebacker, and how you'll see when I get to the diagram. Okay, so letter B, Q, it's going to be a keep read versus both zone and power read, okay? And it's also quite possibly a keep in the P portion of the RPO to pass, okay, once I get to it with him. I'm going to go through every single scenario, all right, but I'll, I'll, I'll go through it enough so you have a general understanding, okay? So number two, what is the purpose of Q Bronco, okay? Q Bronco. Well, first of all, letter A, we're going to determine the read for the quarterback. That's a purpose, right, without a doubt. Remember, we're taking it to the offense. Now we're turning the tables. Letter B, we're going to mix up who the quarterback defenders are. And I'll show that to you when we get to the diagram. Letter C, we're going to have multiple quarterback defenders. Okay? And letter D, we're going to be able to sell out on a dive. That would be the zone read. And we're also going to be able to, <coughs> excuse me, sell out on the inside run portion of the power read, which is quarterback. Okay? And then we're also going to be solid in that we got pass defenders for the P portion of the RPO. We do not put our defenders in a conflict by giving them a run responsibility and a pass responsibility, okay, as you will see. So number three, what Bronco is, is it's our gray four, our base match quarters, and I'll show you how this plays out. With a tweak, which makes it Bronco instead of just gray four. And um, Bronco, the outside linebacker on the side of the halfback, so you got to do this with an offset halfback. Okay? It's best versus a you know, pistol. You got to have almost 100% tendency to know which way it's going, which makes it difficult. All right? So, outside linebacker, halfback side. So, in this case, it's our D, the dime. Okay? He stays static in the window, which I'll show you in a second, means he doesn't move. So the quarterback who's going to have a keep read, if he's now reading outside linebacker for the pass, he's got a stationary linebacker who's not expanding, what he, which he normally does. So there should be indecision there. He's in the window. That's the Bronco part of it. Okay. And then letter C, the inside linebacker, halfback side, is also static unless it's a power read, which would mean the guard's pulling. Okay? That means the guard's pulling, he's going to go with the pull. Okay? So now let's come over here. This is what we call our 58 front. 
and you'll see why in a minute. That means we got a five, zero, and a five, which bumps the outside linebacker on the tight end, the attached outside linebacker to a nine. Inside linebackers have same alignments, but you'll see why momentarily the inside linebacker on the side of the halfback stays a 51 technique, whereas in our 58 front normally, and this linebacker is, he's a 31, which means he's a B-gap defender. Okay? Secondary shell stays the same, including the alignment of the detached outside linebacker. All right. So let me get to what I want to say now. You notice here we got zone read and then power read. You got to teach your players what to expect and what to eliminate. So on the side of the offset halfback, that's the zone read side, and there's a RPO possibility. If they run the power read, which is going to be opposite the halfback, you also still have an RPO possibility here, okay? <clears throat> so obviously the schemes will be zone read. It's usually full zone scheme, power read. It's some kind of a gap scheme, right, double team, pull the guard around, you know, probably reading him, and I'll go over all this with you. So they're going to try and high wall the inside linebacker, either this one or this one, okay? So I'll – not going to draw the blocking scheme, but that's why he's static unless if his guard pulls, that'll be in concert with the power read, and so he'll put him where he needs to be, okay? Because now the quarterback's reading over here, all right? So how does this play out? Well, I'm going to take care of what the defensive line does because then it doesn't matter if it's zone or power read to them. Okay, defensive end on the side of, of the halfback. So we just make a West call. Non-subscribers push the button. West, West, West. With West comes a lucky call. So that just alerts everybody. I mean, the West alone usually does it, but we make them make an extra call just to be sure. This defensive end on the snap of the football. It's what we call friction and bend. Friction and bend. So get hands on that tackle. Don't just let them come up second level, you know, without any getting any hands on them. Friction and bend. He is dive for the zone read. He is quarterback for the power read. Okay? This is where the lucky comes in, although usually West does it as well. Nose. Slants A to the call, so A to the halfback. Now, the defensive end, who's in a five technique, also away from the back on the snap of the football, he's slanting up into C gap. Okay, he's slanting up into C. So, I'm going to put a diamond around him for right now. And we'll hold off on that. So now over here, that's what the defensive line is doing. Okay, we'll say it's, and yeah, we do it in red. Let's say it's the zone read. Okay. Quarterback reads that. That's the keep. Right? But now as I should go to here, and he isn't moving. He literally is his normal five yard. I know it doesn't look like it. I don't have enough space, okay? His spacing depends on how far number two is. If two's way out there, he stops at five yards and his up toe is on the heels of his DN, tangible landmarks. But on the snap of the football, he's just sitting and zitting, sitting and zitting, static, not moving. And now he reads, quarterback has it. He becomes either number one's coming in, or he becomes the outside quarterback defender. He's a 51 in that, okay? He sees it's, he reads the mesh, excuse me. Quarterback keep. He now is scraping through the butter where the defensive end used to be. He is now a quarterback defender, inside quarterback, right? So inside, outside. If number two were to come in hard, he's going to undercut it. 
We're not asking them to look for two. We're just saying you take that course. If you see the quarterback's arm come up, get your hands up. That's all we say, and that is to prevent two coming on a slant. Let's not forget, these guys are playing gray four. No vertical threats. They're not getting depth. They can be planting and driving downhill. Okay, remember the whole thing. We're in gray four with this tweak. Okay, huge tweak. So now if they run the power read, so I'm going to erase this for a second. So now we get this action, right? He's most likely reading this defensive end. He's up the field, okay? That should be a keep read again, right? So I, I don't mind doing this. You get this type of look. He's pulling around. He's probably trying to high wall that linebacker. If there's a pass route combination going on, these guys are all gray four. See, it's helpful to have the, the defensive end slanting up the field so if quarterback screws up and gives it, we got a guy right there. He's looking for that. Okay? So now the static guy, remember, static unless. So just limit it. You're static unless he pulls. <laughs> there it is. So then he's going to shuffle, shuffle. He's looking for this. He sees the action. He's going to patch over. Okay, he's going to get the double down veer block. He's coming downhill, okay? So if the quarterback sees that, he just might give it. But if he keeps it, getting all kind of excited, he's going to have a face full of, in this case, it's a Mike linebacker. And again, these guys are all gray four. So if there is a release by the tight end, he's going to get jammed really hard by the rover. But now the rover is considered a run first, even though it's sky, because if this guy's running up the field, the whip, the two DBs, they're playing gray four. They're pass guys. Okay? And if they run a little replace route here, we can rally up to it. So that is Q Bronco. Q Bronco. So as I said at the beginning, my subscribers, I thank you, non-subscribers. I hope you tease you into pushing the button. Everyone, please, questions at all about this, reach out to me at coach, excuse me, mjsullivan, gmail.com. I want to thank you for watching MGS Coaching Football. I thank YouTube for providing this platform.